Okay guys, I'm finally back at home, back in Italy. I had a pretty good holiday. I uh, didn't really relax that much, to be honest with you. And I really needed to relax, but I did not, so. As you can probably tell by the title of this video, we're gonna be talking about the SERP today. What is the SERP? How can we manipulate it? Why is it so important? Why is it basically the most fundamental part of our research? So in order to understand the SERP, we need to also understand what the index is, okay? So let's talk first of all about the index. Imagine you're Google, imagine you have, I think it's like trillions and trillions of pages, okay? How do you decide what is important, what's good content and what's trash and should not be shown on Google, okay? That's what the indexer's job is. So the first job we have is to index the content we are working on, okay? So this isn't only just, this isn't just Redbubble, it's everything, okay? So Redbubble, Pinterest, Medium, Etsy, all of these different things, okay? So Redbubble alone has millions and millions and millions of pages. So that's already a problem for Google and a problem for Redbubble because you can't index everything. So what actually is the index? The index is basically uh, Google saying that this content is good enough to be shown on Google, okay? So when we talk about indexing, what it actually means is that Google has said that this piece of content, let's say it's a Redbubble design, is good enough to be on Google. It's in the index or it's been indexed, okay? These are, the, these are the terms that we use. So if I write a new blog post, if Google thinks that the blog post is good enough, it will almost immediately index the content, okay? That's something I've personally been working on. You need to show to Google that your website is trustworthy, that you're creating good content, and then as soon as you post that blog post, normally what happens is Google will index it immediately, okay? And this is really, really important for just general SEO. You need Google to be indexing your content, okay? Now, I wanna talk about something really, really important to me, okay, which is the no index tag. I feel like there's been some misunderstanding of what the no index tag actually is. The no index tag is a way for a webmaster. If you don't know what a webmaster is, it means somebody who owns a website, owns a website, okay? So not Google, the webmaster, manually or automatically, programmatically, whatever, they put a piece of code that says no index. It normally says meta name, meta equals no index. That is a clear choice and it's a clear sign from the webmaster to Google. It's not from Google, okay? Someone told me they contacted Redbubble support and Redbubble, Redbubble told them that Google was responsible for the no index tag. I, I don't wanna get any legal, into any legal tro trouble, but in my opinion, I have to say in my opinion, that's not true. Okay, it's really not, in, in my opinion, okay, from my research, from how I understand SEO, it comes from Redbubble, it doesn't come from Google. Feel free to prove me wrong, if you can, but I really don't think you'll, you, you'll be wasting your time, because I know that I'm right, but I don't want to, I don't want to make any accusations, but Redbubble are saying it's not them, maybe take that with a pinch of salt, I don't know, whatever. But it's from the webmaster and the no index is a, is a thing that we, if I have a website and I don't want certain pages to be on Google, I can say, do not index this page by writing a no index tag, okay? Please, please, please just believe me when I say it's Google, it's Redbubble, not Google that are doing this. Okay, so that's what the index is. Once you're indexed, normally what happens is you're basically you start to pick up keywords, okay? Now, there's a little bit of a problem with doing this on Redbubble because we don't have access to what is known as Search Console. It would be really, really nice if we had access to Search Console, but we don't. 
So we cannot see specifically which keywords people are searching for to find our products on Redbubble, okay? If you have your own website, this is another massive advantage of having your own website. And I can't stress this enough, I really, really believe that having your own website is the future of print on demand, making money online, whatever. These websites are all amazing, but if you have full control over it yourself, even if you have this much traffic compared to Redbubble, it's your traffic, you're in control, you can optimize, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So once Google says, okay, let's, we, we have indexed this page and let me just, let me just give you a live demonstration of how to check whether your shop is indexed. So site uh, redbubble, uh, site redbubble.com in URL, buy income stream. Wait, what's my name? Oh no, it's buy stream surfer, sorry. Stream surfer. Okay, so this is a way to see whether your products are on Google. You just, so if I open one of these products, you can see that my Redbubble name is Stream Surfer. And therefore, if I do that search operator on Google with buy Stream Surfer in the URL, you can see that my products are actually indexed, okay? This will not be true for everyone. But anyway, I don't wanna get into this no indexing issue again. I just, this is how it's supposed to be. Okay, just remember that. So once you see this, you know that your products are on Google, which is perfect. So how does this actually work now? You've got to remember the SERP, S-E-R-P, is a list of websites. So let's take my favorite example. I just want to grill for God's sake. Let's search for it. We can see that the SERP is as follows. There's adverts at the top, that's normally true. If you have this keyword and you are uh, in the ads, that's a really, really good sign, okay? So you can see that my, my product is not in the ads, okay, because um, it's already number one on Google. This is the first organic result, okay? But let's imagine that this is, because I'm in Italy, I don't know where uh, my design ranks in, for example, America. So I need, to take in, I need to take that into account. And what I would normally do is I would use something like TunnelBear if I really, really wanna get into like deep research. I would use TunnelBear, which has a free VPN, uh, 500 megabytes, I think it is. And you can see where your designs are ranking in America, for example. So let's say I go down here. What I wanna see is if there's some kind of, um, Okay, that's super interesting. I think this is one of the methods I taught people a while ago, yeah, like one month ago. That's really, really interesting. So that actually works um, by posting a Redbubble, uh, sorry, a Reddit comment on your own profile. You can actually rank on the SERP, which is super, super interesting. It seems that there's no Pinterest or Medium. Okay, there's a mosquito. So. Yeah, using this as an example is not the best because I, ideally I'd want to see some kind of Pinterest action, whatever it might be. So let's try it instead something like funny stickers for wedding. I'm going to guess that mm, Pinterest will be here somewhere. Tenor Pinterest, there we go. Okay, so this is what I've been talking about time and time again about the SERP. The SERP, we, we, as designers, it's our choice whether we dominate the SERP or whether we just upload to Redbubble and hope for the best. You have two options. You can upload to Redbubble, you can upload to Zazzle and just stop right there. Or you can go the extra mile. You can upload to all of these websites. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got Zazzle, number one. So if you're not uploading to Zazzle, you've already lost like a crap ton of traffic because you are not you're not here, obviously, because you haven't uploaded to Zazzle, okay? Uh, Redbubble, you've probably uploaded to Redbubble. Let's just quickly see how many results this keyword has, 59,000. So already you can see Zazzle has under 500 results. Redbubble has 59,000. So you can see already that using both of these websites is hugely advantageous. TeePublic, I, I, I'm a little bit worried about TeePublic because I just get banned repeatedly for no reason. So. Uh, Etsy, 283 results on Etsy, that's pretty interesting. Tenor, I don't know if there's much we can do with Tenor, honestly. I don't really know how Tenor works. 
maybe you could just put a gif here and yeah i don't really know how it works but and then pinterest is super interesting to me i've talked about this many many times um yeah this is how i personally would advertise on pinterest oh my god that was a b i think i would make a i think this is a board or this could just be somebody's actual account i'm not 100 sure but i would make a board called wedding stickers yeah, it is. It's a board. So I make a board called Wedding Stickers, and you can SEO this here, and then you can just put all of your uh, products in that niche down here, basically. That's how I personally would do Pinterest. Uh, Amazon. Amazon's Amazon. So if you're uploading to all of these websites, you have now dominated this search engine result page. If you've just uploaded to one, you need to really ask yourself whether you are giving yourself the best chance of making a sale because everything is about visibility, okay? You increase your visibility every time you upload to a different website, every time you upload to something new, whatever it might be, you are increasing your visibility. The most important thing to know about search engine result pages is if you don't upload, you will not appear on that website and you will not increase your visibility. So, what are we taking away from this? We're, if we're already on Google's index just for one web page, that's fine. But if we can be on the same index for 10 pages on 10 different websites, you've massively increased your chances of making a sale. This is why it's so important to upload to Pinterest, to Medium, whatever it might be, Reddit, etc., etc. I really hope this helps guys because I know that there's a lot of confusion with what SERP actually means, how we can use it, et cetera, et cetera. But basically what it means is increasing your visibility across the internet by using various free websites. Thanks for watching guys and I'm back. I'll be making content every day again and I'll see you really, really soon with some more content. Peace out.